Ben Fry, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, Marco. So, uh, you've had a massive career, five solo albums aside. I mean, the Eagles, one of the biggest bands on planet Earth. When you first got your first guitar, could you see that in your future? Well, you know, I mean, I think I think everybody has a little bit of that dream when they, you know, when they pick up their guitar. And for me, you know, I started playing the piano from the time, and I took piano lessons from the time I was five until I was twelve. But this was all before the Beatles. And then in my junior year, excuse me, my sophomore year in high school in 1964, my aunt took me to see the Beatles at the Olympia Auditorium where the Detroit Red Wings played hockey. And I went to the Beatle concert there, and then I really, then I started playing guitar for serious. And uh, I think first I had a four string, and then I had a six string. But you know, I mean, I could see, you know, I mean, I could see even when I was like fifteen or sixteen, you know, I could see myself standing on the stage and, you know, singing songs, you know. So I've been very lucky. I suppose everybody, you know, but you know, it's a, a, it's but it's it's a dream everybody has. Yeah, yeah. Who, who were your, you know, who were you aspiring to be like at that stage? Well, you know, I grew up in Detroit, so everything that I thought was interesting was happening on the West Coast. That seemed to be the promised land. You know, the, it was warmer <laughs> for starters, but that's where the Beach Boys and the Birds and the Buffalo Springfield and all these other interesting bands were in the mid '60s. Uh, so I always wanted to go to California. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just there, very lucky to have an impromptu version of a Beach Boys track there. And you've got one on your uh, recent album, obviously. And it's interesting. Obviously, parallels. How much do you? Uh, how much do you love them? With how the much, Beach Boys. Beach Boys. How much are they an inspiration? Well, you know, they're. I play, and when I was growing up in Detroit, uh, when I was in 12th grade, I played in the only surf band in Michigan. Everybody else in Michigan, they wanted to be either like the Stone. most of the bands were like the Stones. They had one guy who stood in front and sang and everybody played their instrument to whatever abilities they had. But I was in this band with these guys from Birmingham that sang harmony parts and they did Beach Boys songs and they did Beatles songs and they did you know, other songs with harmony. So I started singing with other people right away and I really liked that. And we did all the early Beach Boys stuff, yeah. you know, uh, Surfing USA and, you know, uh, Surfer Girl and, you know, all of the, we did all, we did all of their stuff. So I started out, you know, admiring them right away. And then Pet Sounds came out and that blew everybody's mind. And it was like no one could barely figure out what the chords were that Brian Wilson was yeah. playing to some of the songs. It was so, it was pretty amazing stuff. So, and you know, I think, I think myself and I think probably the other guys in the Eagles too, you know, we sort of feel like the Beach Boys are the, are the great American vocal band, you know, nice. and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and they were pioneers. That's you know that's the uh, that's the other interesting thing. Bands bands like the Eagles, we were soon to follow, but you know we were more like settlers, you know. And and but the Beach Boys were definitely uh, they're right up there. And we really, uh, we really love those guys. Yeah. I bet after hours on there, you've only got one sort of original track, and that's the title. Track. Yes. Why is you know why not have two or three on there? I beg your pardon. Just why why not have two or three sort of original tracks? Well, I did, you know, uh, if I make another record like After Hours, and I, I think I probably will because there's some songs I didn't get to sing that, I, that I'd like to have a shot at, I'm going to try to write a few more songs in this style that, that are compatible. The song After Hours actually was written for the All Nighter album. It was supposed to be the last song on an album that, you know, I did almost 30 years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And I called my friend Jack Temption. I said, do you want to come up to L.A. and try to write a standard? I'm making this record, and I've cut this, th these songs, these songs. He said, Glenn, I think we already did. He said, don't you remember After Hours? I said, oh, gosh, you're right. So, so we dug that up, and I played it for the guys, and that's how I got on. But I think that would be, you know, that's, that's maybe part of the next step now that I've, now that I've lived with this material and, and worked on songs like this would be to maybe write some songs uh, in, 
that style. That would be that would be a, a, a challenge. And uh, twenty years seems strange weather as well. I mean, it, during that time, you're not your prolific writing stage. Obviously, it was years ago, but you must have written a good few songs in. Well, you years. know, you know, yeah, I have, you know, and and you know, we wrote songs, uh, you know, for the Long Road Out of Eden yeah, yeah, double CD. You know, that was a twenty-song record, so I got, you know, I had a good share of, uh, you know, I'm quite a few, quite a, quite a few songs on that record. But you know, uh, a lot of people have asked me like, why haven't you made a solo record in this long? And really. I had to even thought about, you know, that, that, that it had been this long. And, but two things happened in the early 90s. I got married and I started a family right away. So by, by 1993, I had two small kids. And then the Eagles got back together. We started talking about it in 93. It happened in 94. And once the Eagles got back together, you know, that was, you know, that became the focus of you know it was family, and the band. So the really the Glenn Frey yeah, solo yeah, career yeah, wasn't uh, it wasn't as important you know and and the Eagles is the mothership, you know we. Uh, it's you the know, last tour. I think it was it's a big, three years, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a big you know, but you know it's it's been, the Eagles have been very good to all of us and all of us guys in the band, understand the value of keeping the band together, so so we do that, but then. You know, it just so happened that I started working on this record, and it just happens to be coming out at a time when we're kind of laying low. It's not a real busy touring year for us, so that's, right. what, that's worked out. For, for almost the, the last, go back to the Eagles then, that, um, that three-year period almost, the set list remained the same the whole way then. We play, well, we were playing a three-hour show. And, and we had Long Road Out of Eden to promote, so yeah. we, had, we were doing, I think, about nine songs from our new record. But we have such a deep catalog that we had to still do, you know, like 18 of the other songs yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, that everybody would, would want to hear us play. So we had a, we had a very, uh, it was a good problem to have. Oh, no, absolutely, definitely. But yeah, we, we, so we had a touring cycle, like you say, we were on the road for the better part of three years. Incredible. I mean, during that time, what was the band vibe like? Must be a few arguments going on. Mm. We're all getting on all by good. Well, you know, we 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 have a really good working relationship now. I'm I'm very happy with uh, with the way things are going in the Eagles since we got back together, and in particular, in particular, in the last five or six years, I think I think getting in the studio and actually making Long Road Out of Eden, which also took about three years, and and. Uh, commitment from Don and myself and everybody uh, I think that really got us over the hump and you know I think now we you know I'm very comfortable with who they are the guys that I work with and I'm pretty comfortable with who I am and I think we have a uh, we don't we don't really have many disagreements we have discussions about things but things don't fester anymore and we were younger you know we didn't perhaps handle some of the pressures of uh, you know what was going on as as well as we perhaps could have, but in this second incarnation of the band, it's pretty smooth sailing. Great stuff. I mean, the Eagles must be in so many people's sort of best of playlist of all time. But what's in yours sort of top ten tracks of all time? Would you say? Oh man. Well, you know, I mean, I can think. You know, I was I was thinking about this too. I was thinking about albums that. You know that are really sort of landmark albums. Sgt. Pepper was a landmark album for me. Pet Sounds, the Beach Boys record, was definitely a landmark record. Uh, you know, there's a few more. Layla, Layla comes to mind. Uh, you know, there could be anything by Otis Redding, anything by Aretha Franklin, mm -hmm. anything by Ray Charles. Uh, I like the band. Uh, music from Big Pink, you know, uh, I would I would put that in there. Uh, I'm a big Clapton fan, uh, but I also like Phil Collins and Peter Gabriel and Paul Carrick and uh, you know. What do you think of the modern day scene, man? Well, I'm not too in touch with you know. I'm not too in touch with uh, what's going on right now in terms of uh, young bands. 
Uh, but I have kids who are, I have a 19 year old and a 21 year old and they, they, they sort of, you know, throw a little music my way every now and then and say, Dad, have you heard this? And, and you know, so they've, they've turned me on to some interesting, uh, yeah, you know, interesting stuff. stuff, you know, White Stripes and uh, Black Eyed Peas, and, uh, Gorillas, love Gorillas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just to name legends. a few. Yeah, I mean, so um, new song-wise then, on, on the Eagles front, when is that, any sort of projects going to happen there? Well, for the last year, and well, actually for the last five years, but intensely this past year, we've been putting together a two-DVD history of the Eagles. Uh, first CD, I mean, the first part one obviously being from 1970 to 1980, and the second part from 94 to the present. We hired an Academy Award-winning documentary director, a guy named Alex Gibney, to produce this. And so we're, we're very close to, to having it all together and ready, ready, to, uh, ready to come out. And uh, I'm excited about it. I, I, what I've seen looks very good. And, and, and I keep telling myself, if I wasn't in the Eagles and I was watching the documentary about a band, would this be interesting to me? And I, and I found it very interesting. I think it's, it's really well, the story's very well told. And with that, we're talking about maybe putting out like an EP or something, maybe doing four songs, six songs, you know, to just as to sort of be another part of the Original package. Original material, new material. No, I'm not sure. That I'm not sure about, you know. It might be... Uh, it might be some original material, but then, you know, I thought about it'd be interesting if the Eagles recorded a song by the Buffalo Springfield, maybe a song by the Beach Boys. Yeah, yeah, you know, that something good. like you know, sounded good some, just there. You know, <laughs> some, some little, you know, some stuff like that. But you know, we'll see. We're obviously when the summer's over, we'll be back together uh, talking about planning next year and uh, see if we don't do something. Stuff. What, what advice would you have to aspiring musicians these days? Uh, you know, work hard, enjoy yourself, uh, you know, enjoy the journey, you know, uh, you know, try to, imp try to get better, hang around with people who are more talented than you, mm -hmm. get a lawyer, don't sign anything, <laughs> I would say do that as well. But, you know, I think, you know, Music is supposed to be fun. That's why they call it playing music. And no matter what level you're at, you know, and obviously I've been very, I'm very lucky. I'm in a band that's, you know, reached a, you know, a, plat a high plateau. But I also have friends that play music that are just as excited and have just as much fun playing in a small club in San Diego or, you know, or, you know, playing at a state fair or, you know, private parties or anything, you know, it's supposed to be fun. Yeah, yeah. And, and you don't, you know, it's kind of like skiing, you know, you don't have to be going down the black diamond runs making a million difficult turns to get the joy, you know, you can be on just a regular slope and get the wind in your hair, you know, and you feel the movement and the flight and, and the sensation. And I think that's I think that's what you know music can be. So some people play to you know uh, a certain level, but it's supposed to be fun. Fantastic, um, Ben. Thanks a lot for your time. It's been a pleasure. Uh, anything to say to music news watchers? Well, um, you know I I made this new record. I really like it. I think you would really like it. I kind of made it for my mom and dad. It's got a lot of great love songs on it and great arrangements and. Uh, so if you're an Eagles fan or a Glenn Fry fan, I would say check out After Hours. It's uh, pretty cool. Fantastic. Okay, Thanks how about that? Time. <laughs> <It's really super. laughs>